Well, I finally got the chance to test out my car micro camper. The plan was to head over to Thetford Forest, spend a couple of days camping, sleeping in the camper, wandering about the forest, taking some lovely photographs, and generally having a good time. I hope you'll enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. I'm finally here at my destination and I'm going to get something to eat. I'm going to cook it on the folding firebox because I want to do a fry up and I don't want to uh, cook on there and make oil splashes on there. So I've done a quick modification to the uh, to the camper. I've made this section removable now and uh, underneath that I've got all my storage facilities for my food, cup, beverages, uh, coffee maker, uh, I've even got a Van Gogh table in there, that's the micro table, I won't need it today, but maybe later perhaps, Costco quilt, uh, so I'm really, uh, really pleased with that. could say that was a hearty breakfast. I've had a fair drive to get here so uh, didn't have anything to eat when I left home this morning so I'm looking forward to this. Well I'm deep in the forest of Thetford with grandson and grandfather team Paul and William. William has sat down. Paul's tending the, uh, the stew. We've got a nice stew this evening on the open fire. Earlier William showed me how he was making flint and steel sparks and uh, I've also set up a trail camera so it'll uh, be interesting to see if we can uh, get any of the wildlife. Uh, if we do obviously I'll show that in the video. There. You want just enough, just enough to fly over the meat. Well, I've got my camera on my back now, uh, quite far into the, the Thetford forest. And it's a different sort of uh, forestry to what I've got in my own uh, home county of Wiltshire. Lots of, um, I guess they're Scots pine, lots of uh, birch trees as well. And I'm out looking for a composition, for photographic composition. I think I found a nice one um, when I was walking here earlier. Um, I was walking this way about an hour or two earlier. I thought I'll wait until the light gets a bit better. The sun's going down now, so things are improving. And um, just a gorgeous area. Lovely. It's just lovely to see the grass, and it's kept quite low. I think the deer are eating it down and keeping it like this. Uh, anyway, I'm going to make my way along this way to where my composition is and uh, get set up and take the picture. I've got myself one of those brackets so I can flip the camera on its side uh, and you can see on the back of the camera the histogram I think and uh, exposed exposed quite to the right. I've got a nice uh, 
fence post in the bottom right hand corner uh, a water feature in the mid ground and, and the forest in the background there so um, focused uh, one third of the way in a bit there You don't want to see an ugly old. <laughs> you, you don't want to see an ugly old man just lying in his back back of his car. You don't want to see an ugly old man. No, you don't want to see me just lying in the back of my car, comfortable and warm. Anyway, it's been a lovely day. The first day here. Uh, Paul cooked a very nice stew. Went down very well. We sat around the campfire to chat. Bit of a chilly wind. Uh, this being April, things are yet to warm up properly. Uh, then I went out with my camera, and um, it was a difficult time because the light wasn't quite right. Uh, and so I tried with the photographs that I took. I tried to tell a bit of a story. A story, the mood of the place, I suppose and as the light changed and then um, there was brief moments when there was some good light and I snapped off a few photographs uh, in fact it was so quick the light was changing so rapidly that I didn't even have much of a chance to put the camera on the tripod a lot of them were handheld anyway uh, from my perspective sat here I've not really seen them close up but Possibly by now you've seen those pictures. If not, you're going to see them soon. But I'm looking forward to having a good night's sleep now in my micro camper. So with that, I'll bid you good night and I'll see you in the morning. Oh, before I go, illumination. I'm using this thing called the Goal Zero. It's really bright. Let's turn it off. So that's obviously off. The first setting, you get this, this torch beam. The second setting, you get all four LEDs. The third setting, you get two LEDs. It's still, that's, that alone is still bright enough. Plenty bright enough. And that will run for maybe 15 hours, non-stop like that really impressed with that little light that's what Paul gave me as a gift so thanks for that Paul that's a lovely bit of kit and you charge it up uh, by plugging it into a USB port USB chargeable so anyway I'm going to turn it off now and go to sleep I'll see you in the morning
Well, it sure is a beautiful sunny morning in the forest, but I do need that cup of coffee to get me going in the morning. Smell the coffee now, lovely. One of the things which makes this a great stove is the design allows you to put wood in these two slots and the slots are at different heights as well and then you can regulate the temperature of the stove that way This is one of the best stoves on the market I reckon without a doubt I love my folding firebox stove And there is the uh, the GSI kettle on. Get some hot water so I can do the dishes. In this part of the forest, there's lots of these uh, old pines which have come down, and um, everything's sort of starting to rot. But the pieces of wood which are sticking out are quite intact, and where they go down into the main part of the trunk that's where you can get this this fat wood it's basically wood which is infused with resin and it's absolutely brilliant for fire lighting and because it's been dead for some time it's sort of gone very very hard it's dried lost its moisture content and uh, it's like almost like crystal uh, it's turned into a, a, a sort of a crystal hard crystal sort of feel to it uh, so I want to try and break this off if I can and dig my knife into there see if I can harvest some more of this from this uh, what would be a knot Yeah, the, uh, the resin's sort of gone back. It's not so much in the piece of wood, it's more just down in where the knot is. So I'm going to try and uh, break into that if I can. You can see how rotten the tree is. But it's quite hard to batten through. The good thing about this style of knife is that with the Scandinavian with a formal blade and it, the wedge effect it splits the wood quite well you 
Yeah, you can see the resin further in the wood there. It really smells of uh, turps as well, turpentine. Well, we're fast forwarding a little bit in time now, and this is the uh, my last night here before I go home tomorrow. And uh, I just thought I'd show you my Costco quilt because it has been rather cold actually uh, in the night time. Um, but I'll tell you what, I have been abs <laughs> absolutely toasty warm. And the reason being that the Costco quilt is only a thin, thin quilt, but it adds all the difference because underneath it I've got my Rab 700 sleeping bag. But you put the Costco quilt on top and uh, <laughs> it's ludicrous the amount of air that is lofted and trapped by these two sleeping bags. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to sleep sound tonight. Uh, home tomorrow. Oh, well, that was another nice sleep. It's time to now pack up. Uh, and I was really warm last night. I think it got down to about zero outside, or just below. Uh, and this is absolute joy because I'm not cold and sore in the car. And that means I can pack my sleeping bags away uh, in relative comfort. All I've got to do really is pack this small little uh, Costco throw court away. I didn't need. Didn't, I didn't need it much, I take it off last night actually, it was so warm. So anyway, that's that one. More or less packed away. And then we got the... Uh, The main sleeping bag to pack away. No, I don't pack it into the um, in, into the compression bag because I haven't got to stick it, stick it into a small rucksack or anything. So uh, I just pack it into its main storage. Its main storage bag. When I take it home, I just put it in a wardrobe and leave it in this bag. And now if I wanted to, if I really had to, I could put my, I could put my boots on, jump in the driver's seat and drive home, if I really wanted to. Well I'm back home now, and I'm just uh, packing the camper back up and making it into a car again. So we can use it for family duties. Well, the front section of the bed comes off, just leave the back section in there and then uh, simply fold the seat back up again. Slide the seat back and we've got a car. And storage, storage area can just stay there. <laughs> 